Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today it is my privilege to welcome a very, very senior corporate professional, a former colleague from India, Mr. Dee Narayan. Dee, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. What a pleasure to reconnect again. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dean Narayan is the President, South Asia and Global Head of Smallholder Farming of Bayer. He has over three decades of global experience in food and agriculture, and he was named as one of the top diverse leaders by the St. Louis Business Journal in America. So Dean, what, what an amazing experience to reconnect with you after almost three, three and a half decades. But let's start our conversation with your journey. And I would love to get into Bayer, but I'm so intrigued and a lot of my colleagues will be very intrigued to understand your journey from the time you and I were colleagues in ITC to now when you're right at the top in Bayer. No, so, uh, um, you know, it's been more than three, three and a half decades of uh, what you call an amazing <clears throat> journey. Mm-hmm. But I would say foundational to that, and normally we don't reflect on it, is also an amazing family that supported me through the journey, right? So I always tell people, family first, before you think of anything else. But the other big piece for me is working with outstanding companies Mm. that allow you the freedom to grow and develop as an individual, a professional, and more importantly, give you a diverse set of experience. Mm. So this journey, which started with you and I together in ITC mm. for almost uh, 12 years mm. uh, and starting with new businesses for ITC at that time, yeah. with the agribusiness, mm. and then moving on to a global company like Monsanto, which took me again all over the world, mm. which was starting in India, went to the US, Latin America, Europe, and then now with Bayer back in India, um, again, with a different kind of a role and perspective. Mm-hmm. But connecting all of those for me in this journey has been working for great companies which want to make a difference for society and people at large, right? So so that has been what I would say uh, a big part of my own learning. And uh, if I reflect back, mm-hmm. it is, it is it's a truly... Um, a rewarding experience working with great leaders, great people. Of course, you know, when you and I were together, I learned so much from you in the early days. But when, you hmm. having moved on and, and seen different leaders and most leaders, I also say that we learned so much with our people and teams we hmm. uh, who work with us, right? So, and and so so that's that's what it what, what life has been about. Fascinating. And yet, uh, I would love to also get your perspective that you know you right at the top. What did you do right in your journey to the top? <laughs> oh, God. So, so, so when you say right, right at the top, uh, you know, all of us need to reflect. We are part of a team, a company, right? Absolutely. It's just that we have a role of leading an organization, Got right? It. So we are, we are team members first. Um, and, and I'll call out a, a few things, right? The first and foremost, starting out as a young professional, having outstanding mentors who allow you to bring yourself into the role, but more importantly, learn from mistakes, give Mm. you the freedom to think differently, to experiment, risk-taking. So that was the first piece. And again, in that context, I'll tell you in the old days of ITC, when, Mm. when we were together, I had an outstanding boss, which whom you know, Mr. Anupam Das, Mm. uh, who was um, charged with setting up the agribusiness at that time. One fine day, walks up to me, and I was his finance guy, and he says, I have good news and bad news. I said, okay, tell me both. He said, you've lost a production manager, and the good news is I found a production manager. I said, uh-huh. who is that? You. You're going to go and run the factory because you're a product to launch. <laughs> and I said, I, I don't know which part of it is good news, but <laughs> I'm up to the challenge. But I, I say that in jest, but that yeah. is the truth, right? It is at, at the age of 25, 26, to let somebody go and learn and say that it's common sense, work with a team and you can do it was a starting point. Mm. And then the second big piece, I would say, uh, for me, is uh, risk-taking and 
trying different things. Mm. When you you start getting comfortable in a job, I always tell people, look out what is the next biggest challenge mm. and go for it. And I've been fortunate to get numerous challenges, right? And at, in, at, at different points in time. A, a great example was, um, you know, I had no clue of what treasury was about, mm. but one of my bosses at Monsanto called me up one day and said, you know what, you'd brainstorm so much about new ideas. We want to set up a global treasury center in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. We think you're up to it. And wow. I said, Bob, are you sure I can do it? I said, mm -hmm. you're confident. It just means to me that you need to learn some few things and do that. And, and I learned global uh, uh, risk management, mm -hmm. currency management, commodity risk management. So, so those are things that yes. always uh, stick with you, right? Yes. But the last piece for me is surround yourself with outstanding people because you don't know everything, right? So get the people who can complement your skills and lead organizations. So, 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 I mean, I can go on and on, but That's if right. I was to call That's out, those are- No, no, these are very, things. all three are very, very great examples that you've given us. So now moving yeah. on to a uh, buyer, you know, yeah. you've spent a very long time working with farmers and agriculture, not just in uh, India, but around the world. Yeah. What would you say are three key issues uh, most farmers in India face? Yeah, so <laughs> you asked a question that is very dear to my heart. Um, I, I think the first thing we need to understand is majority, 80 plus percent of farmers are smallholders farming in land of mm. less than two hectares. Mm. And, and for them, like you and me, like the way we do our jobs, it is a means to the livelihood, mm. right? The biggest challenge that is consistent across most of the farmers mm. that face in India is ability to generate enough income from farming. Mm. That's number one. Right. Two, and even if they are able to make money in one or two years, it is not consistent, right? There are two good years, two bad years. So the income is the biggest challenge. Mm. And income, that is the biggest challenge that mm -hmm. uh, farmers face. Right. But at the same time, I would say that, um, it, 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 you know, this is not something that cannot be solved. I genuinely think um, if I look at where we are in farming in India mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the way the whole transformation is happening, we have a huge opportunity mm -hmm. to make this very different and take Indian farming into a very different level and right. also improve farm income and livelihood. So mm. the biggest challenge, is, and, and that's why when I completely agree with the government when they talk about doubling farmers' income, that actually means that how do you improve uh, incomes of small farmers? And mm. the last point I would make is we don't see it. You and I, every time we sit on the table to have a meal, mm. we don't realize how many farmers have worked day and night, toil put the meal on our plate, mm. despite all the challenges that they have. And mm. year after year, right? It is not as if that after one year, they shut shop and go. Correct. They don't make income. They still get up the next day and say, yeah. it doesn't matter. We're going to go back and, and try it again. And so there's tremendous learning mm. that is out there. And we owe it to them to make a difference. Well said. And for an organization like Bayer, which has been in India for a long time, how are you making a difference in the lives of farmers? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. First of all, I'm, I'm glad you called out uh, being in India for a long time, right? We pride ourselves as one of the oldest companies in the country, not a multinational, oldest company. We are celebrating 125 years of buyer in the country today. Mm. Okay. And if you look at the chronology, we might be the 17th or 18th corporation set up in the country, if, if I have my facts right. Nice. But, mm. but, 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 but what has been the hallmark through this journey and mm. you know 125 years means we have seen yeah. a lot of things yeah i, I mean uh, 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 changes here mm. is that the company has always been there yeah. bringing innovations mm -hmm. to the lives of every sector that we touch and mm. today if you speak as a life sciences company obviously we are in farming mm -hmm. we are in consumer health and for your self-care i'm sure you're having vitamins yeah. and Whenever you have a headache, I'm sure the brand which you normally go to 
would typically be a buyer brand because Ceridon is a buyer brand. Absolutely, yes. And, and the third and the most important piece is with pharma and healthcare, mm. with oncology, cardiology, mm. we touch numerous patients as well. So clearly for us in this journey, we touch multiple facets of society. So, mm. so we're very proud of our legacy. Mm. And, and uh, specifically when it comes to farmers and farming, and, and this is the, question, the heart of the question which you asked, right? What are they doing? And this is my the earlier comment. I couldn't be more optimistic than ever before. And I have personally been in global agriculture for more than three decades. I can tell you the time for India is now. Mm. I'll tell you why. This is no longer the challenge of new innovation coming, et cetera, et cetera, right? But if I look at post-pandemic, mm. the trends are very, very clear, right? Food security is number one and mm. needs to be addressed. And so the government is focused so heavily in supporting agriculture. It's mm. incredible. And mm. this is a cross from policy to also holding people uh, to outcomes, right? What needs to happen in agriculture. Mm. And the second piece is the opportunity that is emerging for India as a global exporter mm. and, and the aspiration to be a $100 billion exporter of, of, of food mm. and grain is, is, a, is, 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 a, is a great um, target to have. Mm. But having said that, then the question is to the first one you said, but then income is a challenge, right? Mm. So there are mega trends that support transformation the way I see it. The mm. first one is collectivization, right? Nobody can reach 150 million farmers. Mm. But the more you collect small farmer cooperatives, like what the government is trying to push through mm. the farmer producer organization, is a right. great first step to start reaching farmers. The mm. second big push, I think, is digitization. The mm. whole digitization across all our lives mm. is also touching farming, right? And, and with digital tools, when do you have to start planting, right? Looking at the weather, you know, when do you start spraying, looking and, and you know, for insecticides or pesticides, mm. right? And, and this whole piece with digital is going to be a game changer and it is starting to happen. Mm. The third big piece is the whole push and we are seeing it, I see it every day, mm. rural entrepreneurship is taking off in a big way, mm -hmm. which means there are more people starting to look at rural enterprise, including farming, and mm -hmm. wanting to say, how can I go back and connect to this and, mm -hmm. and, and, and make a difference? And the last piece, Ashutosh, and this is a global phenomenon, but very relevant to India, mm -hmm. the challenges of sustainability and how do you overcome it? And with farming right at the middle, right, is how do you make more efficient use of the water? Mm -hmm. How do you improve soil health? So there's a lot of attention going on in mm. all these things. Mm. So if you bring it all back together, I think the attention farming is getting in India and also with a focus on income, then I would say that we are in the right trajectory mm. to start making a difference. Then the question is, how are you going to do it, right? Mm. And that is where, as we as buyer, we truly believe the biggest transformation will come through connected value chains of crops, mm. right? Which means if you think of horticulture, mm. right? Mm. Growing a tomato, you need to go into clusters, like mm. the way I explained mm. to farmer producer organizations to say, okay, these are good quality inputs, right? Because the biggest challenge for farmers is getting good quality inputs at affordable price. Yeah. Then the second piece is agronomy knowledge, right? Because again, knowledge of when to plan what kind of um, interventions you need to take, you need the last mile connect to support mm -hmm. farmers. Mm -hmm. And then the third big piece is financing, right? Because you and I know the cost of financing, and I would say not just financing, risk management, right? Mm -hmm. The commodity price fluctuations, mm -hmm. how do you support them? And the fourth, and this to me would be the biggest game changer, connectedness to markets to be able to sell the produce at the right time for the right price mm -hmm. to make the whole thing profitable, right? So if you look at a value chain for tomatoes and start creating it, this cluster of the farmers, 500,000 farmers, mm -hmm. then this starts making a huge difference. And we as buyer are starting to create last mile ecosystems. And this is a global initiative we are leading mm -hmm. called Better Life Farming, right? Mm -hmm. Where we are recruiting agri-entrepreneurs who go in and set up 
centers close to clusters of 500,000 farmers mm. who then take all this knowledge with mm. all the people in the value chain coming together to support them. So mm. it's a rural enterprise-led farming intervention and support, which is what we are trying to create. And today we have close to 1,500 centers wow. and we've started it three years ago. And like I said, outcomes matter, right? Mm. In wherever we have established it, we are starting to see farm incomes double and triple, right? Now, I, I mean, I'll be uh, dishonest to say all 1,500 centers we've achieved size and scale to do yeah. this, mm -hmm. but the early trends indicate that this is making a difference. I was in Varanasi two weeks ago, mm -hmm. visiting centers, meeting farmers who have benefited from it, and it's incredible to hear the life-changing stories of mm -hmm. farmers who have benefited with last-mile interventions of this nature. And the last one I will make, which is where I'm personally proud as buyer in this whole journey, is we are seeing women coming into this, right? We are seeing mm -hmm. women agri entrepreneurs who are ag graduates coming into this. Women farmers mm -hmm. are coming into this, okay? And then, and this is the most important piece, professionals who were working in cities post-pandemic, mm -hmm. engineers, and I met a PhD scientist, mm -hmm. were going back to their roots and mm. saying, I want to be an agri entrepreneur. I like this model and how can I make a difference? So, so I think to, to me, and we are just one of the people in this whole ecosystem. Mm. The more we have people creating this kind of an ecosystem starts making a difference, right? And in this, we have great partners, right? IFC has come in as a knowledge partner. They mm. train all the agri entrepreneurs. We have great partners like Yara on the mm. nutrition side. We have of takers, local and uh, national of takers, meaning mm. people who buy produce, mm. part of this value chain. So uh, Access Bank brings in financing for us. Mm. So, so to me, I'm starting to feel that, you know, if we are able to do this, scale it up and connect it with the objectives of the country, right? Mm. How do you drive value chains for exports? Mm. How do you drive value chains linked to the cities where the consumption patterns are changing. Mm. How do you take this and start building up sustainable ecosystems, right? Which means you're measuring water efficiency. You're, you're starting to look at soil health and say mm. by changing practices, do you improve soil health? And if you go to a crop like rice, Ashutosh, mm. because rice is the biggest challenge, right? You know, it can be vary from 5,000 to 7,000 liters. Of rice, of what is consumed for one kg of rice production, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when when somebody like Dr. Ashok Bulati tells, tells that we are exporting water and not rice, that mm -hmm. is the truth, right? Because it is an inefficient yeah. production system. Mm -hmm. So if we change this and are able to address these challenges, and then the last piece is the whole topic of emissions, right? Greenhouse gas emissions. How do you reduce that, right? Because that again is directly uh, going to impact the future as well. So. Uh, it's a journey, and I would say uh, there is the, the the end point is a long way off. But I think there is a catalyst atmosphere starting to come together, and uh, I genuinely believe we are a on, a, on a on a on a great opportunity of change. Fabulous response, thank you. My next question to you, uh, D, is that you know you are the global head of smallholder farming. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the best practices that you have seen uh, around the world and in India, where, you know, through you using your technology, farmers around the world can benefit? What, what, what are some of those points? And I'd love to get your thoughts. Yeah. In, in fact, I would tell you that the, the, my best part of my role today is when we started this journey two, two and a half years ago, mm. we used India as the incubator. And I'm okay. so proud to say that what we've started testing and seeing in India, mm. we're taking it to other parts of the world. That's the first thing. Mm. The whole concept of better life farming originated in India. Mm. We've taken it to Bangladesh. We've mm. taken it to Indonesia. We are now in Mexico. We are in Honduras. Mm. So this whole piece, I would say India, is already contributing to significant um, um, change models around the world. Okay. But having said that, what are the learnings that we can get from mm. other countries, right? Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. 
So, uh, and, and this again uh, was uh, uh, something I myself saw two weeks ago when we had a global meeting and some of the uh, best practices were shared mm. where, you know, the challenge of income is the same in every smallholder country, right? It is not unique to India, right? How do you sustain and make yeah. income? Mm. So one of the examples that one of our colleagues shared from Mexico was there, uh, they plant uh, tea and coffee plantations, right? Mm-hmm. And again, what they found was when that cycle starts, it takes four or five years mm-hmm. till they are able to start making a, a revenue. Mm-hmm. So they are always challenged to say, how do we sustain ourselves? That's when they introduce intercropping with planting corn amongst the the uh, the the you know the rows that they could plant right yep. and suddenly they found that combination for the three four years started generating income immediately wow right so the question is this is not about i don't know what is the answer the question is there are answers how do you get it and how do you adopt it mm-hmm. and adopt it to scale Correct. that is the, the first one Hmm. The, the second one I would say is, uh, and it, this again, we are starting to see this, right? Um, hmm. uh, some of the countries in Southeast Asia or China, right, uh, are starting to, are actually uh, starting to use drones hmm. for, for agriculture, right? Whether it is uh, imagery or spraying, et cetera, et cetera. Two years ago, when we were chatting with the government, one of the key government officials was talking to me and, I, and he said, you know, look, uh, there's so much happening outside. Uh, what are the new technologies? And we keep hearing about drones. Why can't we do it? Mm. And he said, if you want to do it, we can do it. Mm. You won't believe it. Just, just I give 200% credit to the government. Mm. We formed a collaborative group with the government, with the agriculture ministry, with civil aviation, mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. of people in the private sector, everybody coming together. And Ashutosh, in two years, the government deregulated and drones have started flying in the country. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and this is a game changer, right? What does it do? It is precision strain. Mm-hmm. It also brings you the benefit of re- real-time advisory, mm-hmm. looking at you know how the pests developing and when you start spraying, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There's so much one can do mm-hmm. with now with this getting introduced. In fact, I was amazed to see the prime minister flagging mm-hmm. out this whole drone yeah. mela was yeah. it last week, right? Mm-hmm. Two years ago, nobody would have believed that it was reality, right? Yeah. But the opportunity was as global companies, we are able to bring these insights on best practices Mm. from other parts of the world because drones is not something we do, but we know the benefit of what it does to agriculture and Mm. connecting the dots and getting a group of people together. Collaboratively, we can make a difference. So I think um, things like that, I would say there's so much one can learn from other other markets. And 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 it's very encouraging to hear you say that a lot of the knowledge that uh, the world is getting is coming out of uh, farmers from India. Which Absolutely. Out. Phenomenal. Ab- Absolutely. And, and the last piece I would say is in today's world of the connected world, uh, we were surprised that one of our colleagues, I mean, teams in China was launching something in terms of product innovation. Mm-hmm. And they pinged me to say, we had thousand farmers from India watching it in YouTube. So mm. the desire and the aspiration mm. to learn is tremendous. Absolutely. Well, right? Right? well so well, and it, it is the same thing. So fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. So uh, do you have got time for one more question? And this is mm-hmm. for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation. A lot of them are young people. What would you say are three lessons from your own incredible journey? And from all the perspectives you have acquired on agriculture and technology and then management and leadership from around the world that you would like our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation. Yeah, this is, this is, um, this is a great question. Mm-hmm. The, the first thing is, I would say, what a one does, you need to be passionate about it. You need yeah. to wake up and say, mm-hmm. I am charged up going to do what I'm going to do today, right? Whether run a business, go to work or whatever it is. So which means the passion needs to come from the purpose, what you're trying to achieve, whatever it is, that passion is the starting point. Mm -hmm. The second big piece is what I 
talked about earlier, right? Is don't be afraid of challenges, right? Challenges doesn't mean that you won't be able to overcome it. It's mm. just the question of what is the mindset with which you go mm. to take on the challenge that yeah. is going to make a difference. Yeah. And the, and the third piece is, and this was the first uh, comment I made mm. as I started mm. this. Whatever you do, and and I know you because I've seen you do it from early days of your career as well. Mm. Family first, right? Mm. Never lose sight of the family. They are the biggest cheerleaders and supporters in the journey. Very well said. Very well said. Be on that note. Uh, what a pleasure it has been to speak to you. You know, I didn't realize Bayer was 125 years old. But as as you were talking, I was thinking in 1979 after my MBA, I had applied to Bayer and I was not selected. So uh, I'm so happy to speak. <laughs> it, it is a loss to buy. No, 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 no. You. I mean, That's not why I said it. But I'm so no, proud I'm to joking. have had you as a yeah. colleague. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing your three amazing lessons, which is be passionate. Don't hesitate to take any challenges and family first. Thank you also for speaking to me about your amazing journey through from ITC to Monsanto to Bayer right to the very top. Thank you also for talking to me about all your experiences in Bayer and all the amazing work you're doing to empower uh, the large base of farmers that we have, not just in India, but all over the world. Thank you again for speaking to me and good luck to you. Uh, no, thank you, Ashutosh. First of all, thanks for the opportunity and inviting me to have this dialogue. I, I really enjoyed it. But more importantly, I do want to say, uh, I know your, what you have done through your entire life and career. You've done some amazingly great things. And what you're doing right now is I think one of the biggest opportunities all of us should do more sharing our experiences and driving thought leadership well because the world is not waiting for innovation the world is waiting for learnings and how do you translate it into action and so um, really really uh, what you're doing in doing these kind of conversations just supports the journey so thank you. thank you for doing that thank you very much thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.